Here you can see that there is so much context switching between the two threads. We just saw how to create two threads. So what if we had to demonstrate the same concept of context switching as we did in the processes? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a couple of things. Like for example, I'm going to make two variables of loop size. One is loop size, the other one is loop size 2. And I'm going to use both of these. For example, if I write here loop size 2, I will have to type cast it to void star and then I will have to, you know, just as we type casted the value when we printed the value of loop size using long type casting, I can declare a new variable called i using long type. The reason for that is that if we try to type cast it to int, it gives us an error because the size of void star parameter is by default long. If we run the size of uh, function we can see that void star even though it is a, a generic type it still has a size in bytes so when you are converting numbers it does not allow you to use the int type casting because int type has four byte length while the long type has eight byte length and by default the void star in most uh, systems has eight byte length all we need to do is define a new variable i using the long data type and simply initialize its value to the same value as this parameter using the long type casting again. So now my i holds whatever value is received in this runner function using this parameter param. And I'm going to send the runner function the value of uh, you know loop size as parameter. So it is going to receive, if I have set the value of loop size to 100, so it is going to receive uh, 100 inside the runner function, right? So once it has received the value 100 and I have written this loop, which simply says that start from zero, go up to the value of i. In this case, it goes from zero to 100 because I have uh, received the value of loop size in, in, in place of param and param is being transferred to i. And I am going to display as many dots as uh, you know the parameter is telling me to do so i'm going to demonstrate to you what happens so if i run over here i see 10 the value received value of parameter was 10 and i'm seeing 10 dots over here so if i change this uh, you know loop size to let's suppose 1000 and i save it and i compile and i run it now i have i'm seeing 1000 dots right and since we have changed uh, this uh, second parameter of the second thread from character star type to integer type, here we were using the number we were sending in loop size was basically, so again, we also were using integer here before, so we, we will need to use long here because of this inherent property of the system that uh, the size of void star must be eight bytes and therefore we if we want to store any number, we will have to use the 8 byte data type, which is long. So then we are going to, you know, change here as well. We're going to change it to long because now we're receiving a number and we can type in a similar loop over here. And let me actually call this, you know, uh, when this thing happens, let me, you know, output a capital, uh, let's suppose T. Uh, for thread one and when thread two outputs let me you know type out uh, let's suppose small o so that we can see the difference in printing between the two things so let's now uh, and also we'll have to convert the value of this parameter from here to here and let's see what happens now okay, so we'll have to change the received value from percent s to ld and then we run it and here you can see that uh, since the first parameter was 1000 we see 1000 t's and the second parameter was 100 we see 100 o's so let's now give it a really large number like uh, we are going to display capital t for a million times and then we're going to see actually let it let's leave it to 100000 and similarly small o as well for 100000 so let's see what happens. Let's compile it and run it. So now we have run, uh, we have displayed the two threads have displayed 
capital T and small o each of them hundred thousand times and right now we are not looking at any context switching and there is unfortunately we don't see any context switching within the two threads right so now we'll have to check for the scope of these threads whether the scope of these threads was appropriate or correct or not or okay so the problem may look like with this the weight function because we are waiting for the first thread before we are creating the second thread so i'm going to take uh, this line and i'm going to put this line over here so now and i'm going to call this tid2 so now my program in the main function is waiting at the same point for both the threads and it is creating both the threads before waiting for each of them so let's uh, run them now and let's see what happens let's hope that now we see some kind of context switching so all right so here you see the threads are being heavily uh, context switched among amongst each other and sometimes you're even seeing that for even a single character it is context switching so uh, one can uh, argue for the pros and cons of these but the main idea and the main concept i was trying to demonstrate with this arrangement was that i wanted to show you that both the threads are working in parallel right so here you can see that there is so much context switching between the two threads and by the way the context switching in the threads is much simpler and lighter as compared to the context switching in uh, processes because processes are something which take a lot of time to context switch because they are maintained by the operating system while here we are using a single program so it is giving me more responsiveness between the threads as compared to the responsiveness that i was looking at between different processes right so i would say we have actually more benefit of running threads here as compared to making different processes to exploit parallelism because here we are getting better responsiveness from both the threads so here you can see so many context switching between the capital t represents first thread and small o represents second thread so you can see they are intermittently running one after the other be both the threads are running with so many context switches so i would say that i have uh, you know showed this concept that uh, multiple threads are going to be run in parallel uh, even if they are running from the same program right so hope you understood this concept and so see you guys